I'm super excited. I have something really exciting to share with you today, and I think it's going to be really good. I hope so. Uh, before I go into the actual message, I want to share with you um, an experience. I haven't lived here in, in USA for a very long time. I've lived here for eight months, um, and I get... For every day I get introduced to new cultural things that go on in this country. And there are many things. I come from Sweden. It's not a, a completely, you know, it's, it's a Western country as well. But there are many things that are a little bit different there from what it is here. So every day I, I get more and more acquainted to, to these kind of things. And, and recently my wife introduced me to one of the things that are a very central part of the culture of USA. And I personally, when I discover this, I, I immediately identify this as a thief of finances and of time. I think it is a black hole that needs to be sent out from this culture in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And what she introduced me to was Target. <laughs> Target is a place where after you get married, it becomes kind of, you don't go there and just pick up one or two things. You, you have to plan for a day to go to Target. My wife introduced me, she said she needed to, to go to Target to buy some paper clips for work, some office supplies. I said, okay, sure, paper clips, that should be fast, right? Maybe we can grab a coffee after or something. She said, yes, that would be nice. And we went there. <laughs> couple of minutes she found the paper clips and she said now I forgot but I need a container to keep my paper clips inside when I'm not using them and then she also needed a new type of A4 paper that she can use to to write on and use the paper clip to so she got a, a, some new sheets of paper she needed new pencils and pens that match the paper and the paper clips so she can write on the paper. And a container for the pen as well. And then she needed a document holder to keep the papers that she wrote for the clips. And then she needed a bookshelf to put the paper container on. And then she needed a desk next to the bookshelf and a chair next to the desk. Hallelujah. Praise God. That was when I experienced and I realized, okay, this is what they mean when they say, let's go to Target. That you don't, you don't go out the same as you came in. It's almost like church, you know. You're going one way, you go out a completely different person. <laughs> Praise God. And, and men, many, many of us men, especially, I'm not saying that I never want to go back. But some things were better before. When you were single, you would go and get what you wanted and you would go out. But now, yeah, you know, if, if you head there by 9, 30, 10, you have to postpone lunch. Because you know it's going to be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hours there. Hallelujah. So, running errands is what I'm going to talk about today. And I thought that this was just a little bit of an experience of what it actually means to run errands. Many times you, you think that it's going to be a fast and quick thing, but suddenly you realize that there's way more that needs to be done. I want you to follow me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. And I'm going to use this um, experience that Samuel had in the temple as the foundation of my message today. Samuel was a small young boy. He lived in the temple and God Almighty spoke to him. God Almighty wanted to send him a message. And I want you to keep this in mind as Christians, as children of God. We are constantly running someone's errands. Whose errands are you running during the day? Is it your own? Is it the enemies? Or are you running the errands of God Almighty? And that is what we're going to talk about today. And how one errand, once, Samuel listened to the voice of God and said, Okay, I'm going to do what you ask me to do. And that one errand defined his destiny. He stepped into his divine calling by one errand that he completed. We're going to talk about running errands today. Hallelujah. And I believe that this is something that is going to touch many of us. Many of us, when we think about running errands, 
we fail to realize that when God Almighty asks you to do something, my God is the God of a bigger picture. God doesn't just ask you to do something and he has no motive for it. He does everything for a purpose. If you ever feel like God Almighty has told me to bless this person, well, maybe it's not just because that person needs to be blessed. Maybe it's actually a bigger picture. It's part of a bigger thing. Because everything big starts little and every long journey, every epic adventure starts with one tiny step that's the tiny step that Samuel did and took in the book of first Samuel chapter 3 we're gonna read verse 1 now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli and the word of the Lord was rare in those days there was no widespread revelation and it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy Therefore Eli said to Samuel, go, lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. If you continue reading this chapter, you will see that next time God spoke to him, he said, your servant is listening. And God Almighty gave him a prophetic message, which was the first one of many more and that one moment defined his entire calling the destiny the purpose for which he was created was defined by that one errand that he accepted from God Almighty and it says in verse 19 further down so Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground that means that from that point whenever he stepped out God Almighty supported his position. Why? Because he had run the errands for the right God. Hallelujah. And I want to share with you, before we go into, I'm going to share with you four different things. I think there, are, in this case of Samuel, it's a perfect situation to look at, to see that, okay, if I want to discover my calling, if I want to know what God Almighty has in store for me, what am I called to be? Am I meant to be a prophet? Do I have a prophetic gift? Am I meant to pray for people? Am I, do I have a gift of healing? Am I meant to be super rich so I can sow into the kingdom of God? Am I a speaker, a motivator, an encourager? Am I a doctor, a lawyer? What am I meant to be doing in my life? There are, there are some simple things that can point you in the right direction. And I'm going to just share that with you before we go further into the message here. I feel like when it comes to your destiny, I used to call it the three D's of destiny. The first thing is desire. If you do not know or you are not sure of what you have as a gift or as a calling, your desire is your indicator. God Almighty would not plant a desire to do something that he never purposed you to achieve. God Almighty would never make, give you a hunger and thirst to do something and he never planned for you to do that thing. No, I'm not talking about the kind of desire that one day you wake up and you want to be a millionaire and next day you wake up and you want to travel the world and next day you want to wake up and you're going to go back to school. That's not the kind of desire I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of divine seed of desire that have been planted in you your heart and that has been there and it doesn't matter where you turn you always see that thing you say oh this is what I'm really burning for that desire is what God put in your heart to show you the direction to walk in 
How can you ever know? You must follow your desire. When you follow your desire, the next step is discovery. Exactly what happened here with Samuel. Samuel discovered what God Almighty had planted in his life. He discovered the gift and the calling for his life. And that defining moment can never happen if you don't walk towards your desire. Once you discover it, thirdly, it's a lifelong journey. It's development. You constantly develop the gift and the calling that you have in your life. No one will ever be perfect at anything without development. The three D's of destiny. That's how to achieve your destiny. If you don't know, start that journey right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back to the story of Samuel. Four things that Samuel, it was prerequisites before Samuel could actually get to the position that he was in. Number one, Samuel was about his father's business. Tell your neighbor about my father's business. business. Whose business are you about? I'm not talking about business per se in this sense. I'm talking about the affairs of his father. Follow me to the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 49. In this case where I'm going to read from Luke chapter 2, verse 49, the parents of Jesus lost their son. He ran away from home or when they were out traveling, they got separated And they looked for him for a very long time until they came to the temple. And they found their son sitting in the temple. Verse 49. And they asked him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and us, I have sought you anxiously. That was his mother. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? They found Jesus Christ in the temple. He was about his father's business. God Almighty found Samuel in the temple. He was about his father's business. Now, I'm not saying that you need to grow up in church to be able to be used by God. I'm talking about your heart, your temple. What is there? Is it Jesus that fills your heart or something else? When you have Jesus Christ as number one affair in your life, the most important business, you are taking the first step towards that destiny. I'm going to share something with you right now. Many of us might have heard it. How many have heard of what they call the 10,000 hour rule? 10,000 hour rule. Some people have heard about it, some haven't. Some people say that it's a flawed idea. It's fine. I'm going to just share a few ideas of what this uh, idea says. It's the 10,000 hour rule. It says that for you to become an expert or a champion at any particular trade or trait, it's going to require at least 10,000 hours of you educating yourself and practicing your trade before you become an expert at it. I looked up some numbers before service and it says that a professional poker player takes about 7,000 hours to become professional at it. Uh, If you want to be a professional economist, it takes 26,000 hours. I'm talking about not just a layman, I'm talking about an expert, the best of the best. That's when people look up to you and say, oh, he knows what he's doing. If you want to be an expert neurosurgeon, it takes 46,000 hours. If you want to be a master chef, it takes 13,000 hours. And just to put it into perspective, if you spend two hours per day educating yourself and repeatedly practicing to perfect your trade, two hours per day, seven days a week, it would take you 13 years to get to that point. If you do three hours per day, seven days a week, it will take you nine years to get to that point. If you only want to do it five days a week, you need to do four and a half hours per day for nine years to achieve 10,000 hours at what you do. Hallelujah. Many times we have Christians who do Christianity as a side hustle but they think that they will get a full-time reward. 
when you're expecting full-time rewards, you need to put full-time into it. If we spend an hour or two hours per week, what reward are you expecting? Christianity is not a side hustle. Christianity is not something you do part time. Christianity is full time. And if you want to be an expert at being Christ-like, you need to put your hours into it. You need to put your time into it. There's no way around it. It's not about your gift, your talent, or how you were created because we were all created differently. If that was the basis, for how good you could be at something, it would not be fair. But Jesus Christ and God is fair. That's what he said. You have time. Put your time into it. We have today, you and I, to use at our disposal. That is the gift that God Almighty has given to us. We choose to put today to whatever we want. It's time for you to begin to put your hours into what really counts. So don't think... That going to church on Sundays is going to earn you the gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, or the gift of deliverance. These things are not something that you can, you can purchase for time. That's not what I'm saying. It's something that comes free. But Jesus Christ wants to make sure that he, his gifts lands in the hands of experts. He doesn't want to give his gifts to people that don't know how to use it. He wants to give it to them that can... Turn this world around with that gift. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Samuel was about his father's business. I want to challenge you today too. Make sure that you reflect and, and look and see whose business am I really about? It's, I'm not saying that spending 12 or 13 hours per day in church is going to make you to get there. But it's sure bettering your odds. Trust me, it is. Praise God. Hallelujah. The second area in the second thing that was a prerequisite for Samuel to be able to get to that position where God spoke to him and he knew what to do when God spoke to him is simple. Samuel had someone to show him the way. He had Eli that when he came to him and said, I think I'm hearing the voice of God or something. I'm not sure what it is. Someone could tell him, you know what? As for my experience, I think that is the voice of God. And here is what you need to do in order to answer that voice. Many of us, we are in that position and we hear this, but we have no one to bounce it off of. We need a mentor. The need for mentorship in our life is more important than anything else. Samuel would never have understood that it was God talking to him if not for his mentor. Many times mentorship is kind of a controversial thing in Christianity where they say, well, Jesus is my mentor. Yeah, Jesus is your mentor. But are you talking to him? What did he tell you? If you don't know how to hear from God or how to speak to Him in a right way, then get close to someone that can. They're going to point you in the right direction. If you want to be close to Jesus, press close to Him. If you can't get close to Him physically, get close to His Word. What He has said. If you want to be like Benny Hinn, press close to Benny Hinn. If you want to be like Pastor Vlad, press close to Pastor Vlad. When you get close to any of these men of God, they will tell you, oh, you know what? You can copy some of my things, but the main thing, copy from him. He's going to show you better things. It's just like Apostle Paul told the church of Corinth in the book of 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. He said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Why did he say that if it was enough for them to just imitate Christ? Because they didn't know how to imitate Christ. Eli showed Samuel how to hear and answer God. We have life groups in this church where people who have run the race, walked the walk and talked the talk is ready to share their experience with you. If you are there and you're like, I think I'm hearing God. 
I think I have a calling on my life. I want to do this and this and this for God. Well, I'm going to show you how to fulfill that thing. And conveniently, life groups are starting on Tuesday. Praise God. Wow, what a perfect coincidence. If you have not yet joined a life group, make sure you do so. It will transform your life. If Samuel did not belong to Eli's life group, where would he be? Make sure you join a life group. I'm not even joking about this. It's, it's funny, but it's serious. You need someone. Do you know how many times God Almighty directly used the voice of my mentor to speak to me? And I'll be like, well, this is just a man talking. And then he came to pastor and I'm like, oh. So actually, it was God speaking through that person into my life. It doesn't mean that that person is perfect. It doesn't mean that he is so holy that he can hear from God. It's that God loves you so much, he will use people around you to speak to you. He had someone to show him the way. The third thing that I want to talk about in this case with Samuel, and this is the thing that I really love more than anything, is that Samuel made himself available. Samuel made himself available. In the book of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8, God Almighty asks openly into the open air, whom shall I send and who will go before us? And the prophet says, here am I, send me, I'm available. I may not be perfect, but I'm ready. That is what it's all about. Samuel, when God called out, he said, here I am, I'm listening. It's not about being a perfect person. Jesus Christ never expected us to be perfect. All he needs is for us to be available. How many here, and I want to share this quick experience, how many here have ever used the app called Uber Eats or Grubhub or DoorDash? Raise up your hand if you've used it. Isn't it very convenient? How many here have worked for any of those companies? Raise your hand. So only a few people is going to know what I'm talking about. I have worked for that in Sweden before I came to US. I was working many jobs to try to save up for my wedding and stuff like that. So in the evenings I would drive Uber Eats or the Swedish version of it. How it was, actually I was bicycle, on the bicycle. <laughs> the one, the manual one, not the engine one. Yeah. And I had a big, big backpack, like this big backpack on my back. back. And you made about... I guess I shouldn't say how much you make. You make a couple of bucks per order. So you have to work hard if you want to save some bucks. So anyway, how this app works is that you log on to the app, which means that now I'm available. I'm, I'm on duty right now. And then whenever someone places an order, purchases some food in your neighborhood, it will come up in your app. It will be a, a ringing sound, like a, a warning, like a text, a constant text message. They're showing you that, oh, there is a order available in my neighborhood right now. And then you choose to accept, yes, or to just let it ring. Sooner or later, some other agent in your neighborhood is going to pick up that order. And whoever picks it up first is the one that is going to have the privilege of delivering that wonderful food to the customer. Praise God. I want to use that app to bring it into similarity with the kingdom of God. Because how it works is that you can leave it ringing from headquarters for a long time. Sooner or later, someone's going to pick it. If it's not you, you missed out on that order. Someone else is going to go and deliver it. And you know what happens? The more you deliver, the more you get. The headquarters will begin to discover that, okay, this person really want to work. Let's send him more, more work his way. The more you can accept, the more you can get. Nobody is going to tell you, well, you have accepted 10 already. You can't take 11. As long as you say you can do it, they will let you do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is how the kingdom of God works too. When we are running errands for God, many times God Almighty from headquarters will put something on our heart and it will be ringing in our heart for a long time. Have you ever experienced where you feel something that God has put in your heart to do something and then after a while it kind of fades away? You know, someone else picked that up. Someone else picked that up. 
Because God Almighty, His Word will never return void. That means if you don't pick up the calling, someone else is going to do it. And since we know for Samuel, everything big starts little. That long journey that he had of prophetic encounters, it started with that one errand. That one customer that was ringing on your heart. That, oh, that person needs a word right now. That person just needs to hear that Jesus loves you. That person just needs a hug and a lunch and 50 bucks in his pocket. That is the message from the headquarters. Whose errands are you running? How available are you? How many of these customers are ringing on your heart and you say, well, someone's going to pick it up. No problem. What if you're the only one on duty in that neighborhood? What if you're the only one on duty in your working place and it can be ringing for a long time and no one's going to pick it up because God said, I put you there so that you can be used to set them free, to bless them, to love them and to give them hope and faith. I want to tell you that God Almighty can use anything and anyone. God Almighty used a stick to make bitter water to become sweet. He used a stone in the hand of a small boy to slay the Philistines. And he used the dead bones of Prophet Elisha to heal people. He used a staff in the hands of Moses to split the Red Sea. He used a snake for people to look at and receive healing. What is in your hand today? In the book of Matthew 15, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Send these people away. They are hungry and they haven't eaten for a long time. Jesus said, What do we have? What is in your hand right now? And the disciples said, Well, it's almost nothing. Five bread and two fish. He said, Bring it to me. I am the God who makes something out of nothing. I am the God. I don't need much. Just a little bit. What do you have right now? Jesus Christ used saliva to heal the sick. He used an apron to heal the sick. He used shadow to heal the sick. In fact, God Almighty used a donkey. He used a whale. He used a storm and He used man's desire. God Almighty used a flash. He used earthquake. He used winds and He uses fire. God Almighty is the God that can use anything to set people free. And you may come to me today and you say, well, I'm not worthy. I know I'm not perfect. I have this weakness. I'm an addict. How can God use me? Well, Noah was too. Noah was addicted to alcohol. God still used him to change the destiny of this world. You may say, I'm struggling with lust, pornography, masturbation. Well, David and Samson did that too. God could still use them. I'm struggling with anger. Peter did too. He cut someone's ear off. I'm too young. Samuel was too. I'm too old. Abraham was too. I'm from a wrong ethnicity. Well, Esther was too. Jacob was a liar. God used him. Matthew was a thief. God used him. There's no one that God Almighty cannot use. You may be small, you may be big, thin or fat. God Almighty can use you just the same. God Almighty can use anyone. Broken things become useful in God's hands. He doesn't need someone to be perfect. All you need to say is, here I am Lord. Send me. Your weakness can never stop God from using you. Remember that your weakness can never stop God from using you. No, instead, when He begins to use you, that weakness will go away. It's not that you need to be clean, free or perfect for Him to use you. You become clean, free and perfect when He's using you. Last thing, and then we're going to round up this message. The fourth thing that was a prerequisite for God Almighty to be able to use Samuel the way he did. Samuel never gave what he didn't have. What do you have to give? You cannot give what you do not have. What do you fill yourself with? 
what is flowing from your innermost being like rivers of living water if it's not Jesus there's correction to be made in the book of Acts chapter 3 I want to read this for you Acts chapter 3 this is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole world now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour they were just running around doing their daily business their own business going to the temple to pray no big deal and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who enter the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said look at us So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. What I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up to your feet and walk for the glory of God. Peter had nothing but Jesus. What do you have to give today? What do you have to give? To the people in your working place what do you have to give to the people around you many of us concentrate on our weaknesses as I, as I said in the book of Hebrews 11 I want to read this for you and then we're gonna round up this message Hebrews 11 this is another one of my favorites the whole chapter is so powerful in the book of Hebrews 11 you can read about the champions of faith the people who made a difference in their world they all struggled with their own issues none of them was perfect none of them they struggled with pride lust anger greed jealousy strife everything that you and I struggle with too you know what the difference is God never mentioned that all he said was this and what more shall I say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, of David, of Samuels and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Listen to this. Out of weakness were made strong. God Almighty will never look at your weakness and say, I cannot use you. He's looking at your faith and he say, I want to use you. Are you ready to be used by God? That is the question. What do you have to give today to the people around you? We're going to pray in just a minute here. And I want you to rise to your feet right now. We're going to worship God in for just a few minutes. Keep in your mind, God Almighty wants to use you. He's sending His message to you. He's saying, my son, my daughter, can you hear me? I'm right here. Do this for me so that you can begin to walk in the direction that I have for you. All you need to say, here I am, Lord. Send me. I'm not perfect. I'm ready. Whatever it takes, Lord, I'm going to walk the walk and I'm going to talk the talk. Let us worship God right now in the beauty of His holiness. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.